is a great pleasure to be able to give remotely a keynote at this uh, 12th edition of the Chinese Conference on Business Process Management. Business Process Management is a topic that is very close to my heart and in recent years I've been focusing very much on making BPM more data driven. As I said, it's a pity that I cannot join you uh, at this wonderful conference and my goal is to, to talk remotely about what I call autonomous process execution management. And I'm going to show how process mining, so data-driven forms of, of BPM, uh, will help in this respect. I guess most of you know me, but uh, a few words about myself. I'm a professor at uh, RWTH Aachen University. I'm leading there uh, the, the PADS group, so that's a group that is focusing on both process science and data science and for many years I was a professor at, uh, at Eindhoven University of Technology. I'm also the chief scientist at Salonis and Salonis is the most successful German startup. Uh, it is by far the leading uh, process mining vendor in the world. I also have some other jobs like for example uh, I'm in the board of governors of Tilburg University and I'm typically referred to as a, the godfather of process mining. And that's exactly the topic that I will talk about today. So a few words about my group. As I mentioned, we try to bridge the gap between process science and data science. Uh, uh, I'm also involved in the AI center. I'm in the board of directors. I'm also uh, involved in the internet of production. That is a very large expertise uh, center focusing on uh, using data science and machine learning to improve production processes. Okay, enough about myself and my group. Uh, let's dive into uh, the topic. As most of you know, process mining is the glue between data and processes, as is indicated by this diagram. Today, this is completely uh, obvious. However, when I started to work on process mining, let's say 25 years ago, this was far from obvious because there were people working on, for example, techniques like data mining and there were other people that were uh, focusing on process improvement, but typically not using the data. The focus there was on automation and, for example, analysis techniques like simulation, not analyzing uh, processes based on the data that they have. As always, it is a bit difficult to explain what process mining exactly is for people that are not familiar with it. Uh, one could define process mining as a technology that allows you to do anything with events. Just like a spreadsheet is able to do anything with numbers, uh, you can use uh, process mining to do anything with events. And this makes it abstract because it can be applied everywhere. For example, if I would have to explain you what the spreadsheet is, I start using examples. Okay, it can be used to uh, record the grades of students. It can be uh, used to, to, to compute how much we have produced, etc., etc. Uh, but it is a generic technology. And the same applies to, to process mining. If you take a top-down view, uh, it starts, of course, by extracting data from the information systems. Then using process mining tools, you can explore the data, you can filter, select, clean, uh, address the data quality problems. And if you have done all of that, you can automatically discover process models. Uh, this is often very surprising to people that based on the event data and systems, you can actually see what is going on. You can also modify the automatically discovered models more into normative models, what you would like to happen or something in between. No matter how you obtain the models, either discovered automatically or made or modified by hand, you can always replay the event data on top of these models. And if you do that, you will see where the model is deviating and you can see where the biggest bottlenecks in your process are. And again, you can interact with these models, you can drill down and you can, for example, find what are the causes for certain delays or what are the causes for certain um, uh, compliance problems. Uh, 
once you have aligned the event data with these process models, you can uh, uh, use that to do comparative process mining. You can use that to, to, uh, to, to make predictions, etc., etc. And this is where machine learning techniques kick in. Yeah, so process mining can be seen as a super useful tool to automatically generate machine learning problems in organizations. Based on these predictions and the insights, uh, you of course need to change the processes because if you just diagnose without taking action, it is pretty pointless. And today process mining software is able to automatically trigger actions if you see certain performance and compliance problems. So that was a top-down view of what process mining is all about. Then very briefly, a bit of history. As I mentioned, I started around 25 years ago uh, to look at the problem uh, of process discovery, uh, the, the starting point uh, for process mining. And the reason was that I was very disappointed in, uh, let's say, workflow automation. I strongly believed that most organizations would benefit from uh, using workflow management systems. But in the mid 90s, I realized that many organizations were struggling. And the reason was that these processes were very different from what people said or what people thought it was. So this is showing a timeline. When I realized that, I started to, to uh, use much more data-driven approaches. And if you look at a few, let's say, developments over the last, let's say, 20 to 25 years, is that initially it was very research-oriented with a strong focus on process discovery. Then there was the phase of adding additional perspectives. For example, uh, extending process mining with organizational mining, decision mining, etc., etc. This was also the phase where uh, the first techniques were developed to automatically generate simulation models from event data. Uh, then the field extended, the field became more mature, uh, other research groups started to work on it, and now one could argue that it is a mature uh, research area. Yeah, so, for example, the International Conference on Process Mining, already in its first edition, it attracted, let's say, 500 scientists, which is quite remarkable uh, for such a new and, and relatively specified uh, topic. Also, this year, we organized the Process Mining Summer School, and we had uh, over 120 PhDs from all over the globe to specialize in this topic. So the research discipline has matured. If you look at the tooling, it started with uh, the open source tool PROM, where many of the, let's say, initial algorithms were developed in. But what one can witness is that since, let's say, the last 10 to 15 years, there is an increasing number of commercial tools. At this point in time, there are over 40 commercial tools supporting process mining. And what you can also see, uh, there have been several takeovers. For example, Microsoft bought Minute, IBM bought MyInvenio, SAP bought uh, Signavio. So you can see that many of the, of the, let's say, larger software vendors are adopting, let's say, process mining technology. At this point in time, uh, Salonis, where I'm the chief scientist, is still by far the largest and most successful vendors. But you can pick, uh, let's say, from over 40 uh, tools if you want. To get an overview, please visit this website uh, and you will find much more information. So the number of software tools increased, also commercial ones. And in recent years, specifically, uh, for example, in North Europe, we have seen a spectacular adoption of industry. I think it's fair to say that in countries like Germany and the Netherlands, almost all the larger organizations are already using process mining. And in the beginning, I linked it to, uh, let's say, spreadsheets. Uh, if you look at where process mining is being applied, it is applied in all kinds of organizations. Finance, insurance, production, logistics, uh, healthcare organizations, food, retail, telecom, IT services, etc. Et 
What you also see is that most of the larger consultancy firms now have expertise centers in process mining and they help organizations to, let's say, introduce this new technology. Um, here you see some of the logos of some of the customers of Salonis. And so Salonis has, uh, I believe, around 4,000 customers currently uh, across all the different industries that are there. And what is remarkable is that in uh, some of the, of the, let's say, leading organizations applying process mining, sometimes thousands of people are actively using process mining software on a day-to-day -day basis. And so this is really a success story. This is another picture to show that process mining has a very wide applicability. So here you can see the different sides of an, of, a, of an organization. An organization has customers, it has suppliers, uh, it has uh, finance, it has production, it has services, etc., etc. And in all of these areas, one can apply process mining. And it is not, as I said, limited to, uh, to processes like order to cash and purchase to pay. It goes much wider. Uh, so, for example, if you look at the handling of luggage in airports, the treatment of patients in hospitals, but also, for example, how are people using uh, navigation systems in their car, etc., etc. So it, it is super broad, and my personal journey has been to develop uh, this area, first very much in the academic world, and in recent years uh, also helping organizations like Salonis uh, to, to increase the adoption of this technology in industry. So for many years I was a professor at Eindhoven University of Technology uh, when I won a so-called Alexander von Humboldt professor in 2018, I joined uh, RWTH Aachen University, uh, where I'm leading the PADS group that I was describing in the beginning. Uh, so, so that is a, a brief overview of the state of the art in process mining. Let's now focus on a few, let's say, more specific topics. The first thing I would like to show is that process mining is an incredible, uh, interesting and valuable enabler for automation, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And I, I go back to the diagram that I showed earlier, and I would like to point out that many organizations are struggling with applying machine learning. Because if you look at the databases of a typical organization, there are thousands of different tables. Organizations know that they have data, but they do not know how to use it. So process mining provides a kind of lens, a way of looking at this data in such a way that you can automatically generate machine learning problems. Um, you can not only, it's not limited to generating these problems. If you can make predictions, you can also use low code automation tools to automatically trigger changes based on the things that you have seen. We often talk about execution gaps. And so we want processes to run in a particular way. In reality, they often do not do that. And using a combination of machine learning and automation, you can automatically trigger actions. So uh, let's first focus on the uh, machine learning part. And so machine learning, as we all know, uh, it means that you're not programming it based on certain rules, but you automatically learn from examples. And this, in the beginning, it did, it did not work very well. But today we can see that these deep neural networks are being applied in many, many different situations. And they perform really well under the condition that there is a clear task and we have lots of training examples. So the focus of these, machine, these mainstream machine learning techniques are often on specific tasks. Like for example, speech recognition, image recognition, etc., etc. And the breakthroughs are spectacular. However, if one is interested in improving processes, it is not so easy to apply machine learning. Both 
because the problem is not uh, so clear. It's not a clear classification problem. And also because the data is typically scattered about, over multiple tables. So if we are trying to improve processes, we are interested in end-to-end -end performance and not a single task. And that makes it difficult to apply these mainstream machine learning techniques. Also, we would like to have models that we can understand. And machine learning techniques typically are very well at, at predicting something and we do not know exactly how it works. And that's why we talk about explainable AI or explainable machine learning. And that is the neural network makes certain decisions and we do not know exactly why. We try to explain it, but the model is not something that is intended for human consumption. If you do process mining, you would create models that humans can read, that humans can understand. Another challenge is that if we look at information systems, we do not have labeled data. Right? We have uh, uh, ERP systems where we may have uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of tables. Some of these tables have like 100 columns and um, we do not know where to, where to start. Yeah, so we do not have labeled data. So that's why process mining is incredibly important as an enabler to apply machine learning. That is indicated in this diagram. So what we see here is again, we see the different stages. And after we have aligned the event data with the models, we can apply machine learning techniques. And we use the concept of what is called a situation. So a situation could be uh, a particular deviation. It could be uh, uh, cases, for example, how long they take, etc., etc. So we generate standard, uh, uh, let's say, input for which we can train a machine learning model. So, for example, if we have a decision in a process, then each time we need to make a decision, we generate one row in a table with features extracted using process mining techniques. And then we, based on these features, we try to explain the decision that is being made. So this approach is very uh, flexible and it can be used to answer the questions that you see here. Yeah, so for example, you can build models that explain why certain cases take longer than other cases, or we can predict how long they are going to take. The same holds for deviations, successful executions versus unsuccessful executions, etc. etc. Yeah, so this is a very flexible approach and brings machine learning into reach of organizations that normally would not be able to do this. A second connection is that uh, the moment that you are able to predict things, the moment that you are able to automatically detect that there are certain problems, you can also turn it into action. And there is the link to automation. And so we talk about action-oriented process mining. Yeah, so Salonis supports so-called action flows, and each time you uh, you encounter something uh, that, that is not optimal that you would like to improve, you automatically trigger a workflow. Before this was very painful, but today we have low-code uh, platforms with which we can integrate with many different systems. Yeah, so for example, Salonis can integrate with over 1000 different information systems that can uh, be used to automatically trigger uh, certain actions. Yeah? And one of these thousands is, for example, SAP. Yeah? That gives an idea of the, of the scale. If you look at automa automation in general, then uh, a classical mistake that we all made, including myself, is that we think, okay, we can use BPM to automatically replace existing information systems. This is very naive. Just look at the number of tables uh, and the complexity of the process and you will see that this is not, uh, not easy. What is much better is that using process mining, you identify what the pain points are. Yeah, so where are the biggest problems uh, in your processes? And based on these pain points, you automatically generate, uh, let's say, automation solutions that do not try to replace the system, but directly address the problems that you have seen. 
So for example, if process mining shows that you have a problem with certain suppliers, uh, this approach can be used to address exactly these problems, rather than trying to replace the entire ERP system. Of course, this link between process mining and, and uh, automation is also closely related to robotic process automation. All the RPA tools today provide some form of uh, process mining and because the link is obvious. It is very tempting uh, to start with these sophisticated things, uh, predictions and actions, etc. etc. Uh, but if you start at the end, you are destined to fail. You first need to have the first part of the control. Organizations that have difficulties extracting the data should not naively think that they can apply machine learning uh, because you all know if you do that, then uh, garbage goes in and garbage comes out. And it's quite pointless to do that. So this was uh, linking process mining to machine learning and automation. Now I would like to, to be a bit more visionary and, and also reflect a bit on the development of the field. So we started in the mid 90s by uh, creating digital models. And so what we were doing is we were looking at reality and nothing automatic by hand. We were creating, for example, simulation models to describe reality. And we could do with F what if analysis using that. The dashed lines in this diagram indicate that these connections are not automated. They're done by people. Then with the uptake of process mining, it became possible to automatically generate what is called here a digital shadow. So what is possible is that based on the event data that is collected by systems, we automatically create a model that behaves very similar to the reality that we have observed. Process mining is a key technology uh, to, to realize this. But of course it should not stop here because what you see with the second dashed line is that it is indicating that uh, you still need to translate these process mining diagnostics to, to actions. So what we would like to have is a so-called digital twin. So based on the digital shadow that we automatically created, and for example, things like predictions, etc., we automatically trigger actions in reality. That is what I shall try to show before. And it is key to see that process mining is a very important enabler for exactly that. To make this a bit more, uh, let's say, intuitive, let's compare this notion of a digital twin to self-driving cars. And so if you look at uh, autonomous automation, you can compare that to autonomous driving. And if you look at the uh, society of automate, automotive engineers, they have a classification from level zero until level five, which is indicating how autonomous cars are. And typically what one sees is that from level zero until two, uh, the, the driver, the human is still in control. Starting from level three, the car is actually driving itself. If you look at level three, then at level three, the car is driving uh, automatically given certain circumstances. And if this is not, if these are not satisfied, the human should always be alert and be able to immediately take over control. So if you look at the first car that was certified at level three internationally, that was the, the, the picture of the Mercedes that you uh, see here. Uh, but there is a catch here because uh, although it was the first car certified at level three, this is only possible when the, uh, the car is on the highway during daytime and driving less than 60 kilometers per hour. Yeah, so this is still rather primitive. What I try to do, I wrote a short note on it, and you can find the reference here. I compared autonomous process execution management with the self-driving cars. And I also identified the different levels. 
I'm not going to read out loud all of them, but I want you to start thinking about how can we describe the different levels of automation. And will there be times where the management is done completely automatic and we do not need any humans anymore? In my view, that, let's say, future vision is still very far away. If we again compare it to cars, then the first, let's say, self-driving cars, these ideas, date almost 100 years back. And you can see here uh, a picture of the first driverless car by Houdina. If you look at today and you look at successful companies like, like Tesla, and they claim a lot of successes, but Tesla, unlike the Mercedes that I showed before, is still at level two. And so we are still at the beginning. And so to reach level five of autonomous process execution management, we have a few years to go, but the direction is clear. And this is the direction that we would like to move. I hope this helped you and inspired you to think a bit about the future of our field and what, uh, what kind of role that new forms of process mining can play in the field of business process management. And I think there are many. So to give you some pointers, so here you can find uh, pointers to various websites uh, providing you information about uh, process mining and note uh, the tools that we have developed, the task force on process mining. Also based on the summer school, we, uh, we, we created a website where you can download slides, etc., etc. And so lots of information is available. There are also these courses. I think some of you have seen uh, the Coursera course on, on process mining. That, has, that course has been taken by over 150,000 persons. Uh, recently, we also recorded another uh, uh, course uh, together with Salonis that's a bit more uh, hands-on and a bit more, more practical. And so if you would like to, 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 to study the topic in more detail, there's lots of information available. Here you see some process mining books. Note that the process mining handbook came out this year and it is open access. Uh, so you can, uh, let's say, download it uh, uh, for free. So this shows that there is nothing stopping you from, from getting started. So to conclude, I, I briefly introduced process mining, but I think most of you already know what process mining is and, and, and how it can be used. But what was new is that I linked it to topics such as machine learning and automation. And I tried to provide a vision of where the future of our field is going. And this autonomous business process management, this development is very uh, similar to, let's say, autonomous driving, self-driving cars. So we can all see that it is going to happen, but at the same time, it will take a bit of time. I wish you all a very successful and enjoyable uh, uh, BPM conference. Hope to see you in person at some later point in time. Bye-bye. Thank you.